This meeting is with Fort Sand Independent School District. Uh, most of the things that we will be talking about today will apply mainly to Fort Sand. So if someone's watching this who's not from Fort Sand, please check with your high school counselor to see what policies apply for your specific high school. Howard College Dual Credit provides high school students with a quality educational experience. At Fort Sand ISD, students mainly take courses online there's a couple of ITV classes and every now and then a student will come to Howard College and take classes. We do have several different school districts taking dual credit with Howard College. Several of them are listed on the page that you see there. The classes that you are taking mainly broken down into two main types of classes. There's academic transfer courses and there's career and technical courses. The academic transfer courses Howard College uses the Texas Common Course Numbering System for those and should transfer to any Texas public institution of higher education. You receive high school and college credit for most of these academic classes. There's a list that we'll go over later to let you know which ones Forsan does do. It says TSI requirements must be met, which we'll talk about a little bit later. These are all the classes like psychology, English, history, classes like that. Then we get into another type of classes, which is the career and technical courses. The main one that, that y'all take that fall into that is the CNA class. And sometimes some of your students take a computer class or things like that. We also have uh, criminal justice and computers, different medical ones. Those fall into the career technical courses. Those, sometimes you receive a high school credit but you would receive a college credit. At this time, there is no TSI needed for most of these classes. Also, they may or may not transfer, depending on if you need them for your specific major. However, many colleges do accept these for transfer if needed in the student's degree plan or possibly as an elective. Something I need to note here for cosmetology, which every now and then a force student will take it, and the CNA class, there are no quote unquote excused absences. What that means is these classes have clock hours that you actually have to be in the class in order to pass it. You have to physically be there to be able to pass the class. If you don't meet those minimum hours, you cannot pass the class. So you need to understand that whenever you take these two classes specifically, that if you have a job that takes a whole lot of your time away or you're in every sport at Force and, and 4-H and band, it may be very difficult for you to take a CNA class or a cosmetology class and be able to pass that class. Because again, you do have to be there a specific number of hours in order to pass the class. Now you do save a tremendous amount of money on these by taking them in this way. However, there's a big time investment. Howard College dual credit courses are taught by instructors with appropriate teaching credentials. College rigor and expectations are in all of these classes. Yes, they are a high, you are getting a high school credit for them, but please understand these are college classes. The classes may be harder. There's going to be different expectations. Um, one of the things is college classes, for the most part, meet two days a week, an hour and a half each day. So that's three hours a week. What you need to understand is, those three hours are just a class time. You're really expected to do at least that amount of time on that class outside of the class time, getting ready for it, reading, doing any prep, et cetera. So each college class you have each week, you should be planning on spending a minimum of six hours on. Really, some students need to spend more than that to be successful. So you need to understand that when you're thinking you want to take one, two, three classes. If you're doing uh, two classes instead of six hours, that's a minimum of 12 hours you should be spending on that. You must adhere to college policy regardless of class location. There's a Howard College uh, handbook that I will show you a link to on the web page a little while. You need to be sure you read that and understand it because once you start at Howard College, you are considered a college student by the state of Texas, not a high school student. So different rules apply. The college does work with high school officials in scheduling courses to meet the ISD and students' needs. The state really wants us making sure that you are taking classes that you specifically need. They don't want us allowing you to take any classes that are not needed for your specific major. This is a new initiative by the state of Texas that started last year and really we had a big plan of bringing counselors out to all the schools right after spring break but as you know COVID-19 hit us and we got grounded and that plan sort of got delayed slightly. By the time you have 15 hours we're hoping that you will have talked to a Howard College counselor to make sure you're on track to get what you need. Now this doesn't mean that you are committing to going to Howard College. 
a lot of students from there do try to get their associate's degree before they graduate. Again, be sure to read the student handbook. In order to take dual credit, you must meet some TSI guidelines. Now, COVID-19 messed up the TSI. Y'all did not take the STAR test. If you've taken the ACT, SAT, or the TSI test already, we do need to use those and get you into the classes using those because you want all of your scores on your Howard College transcript, your ACT, SAT, everything. Let's get it all in one place. That way, whenever you get ready to go to college, you won't have to worry about getting as many records set. It'll all be on your official transcript. Your high school transcript will even be included on your Howard College transcript. So it'll make it much easier for you to get records to go on to the next place. The state of Texas has made some different options for TSI this year only. We can allow students to take a limited number of classes, one, maybe two, without taking the TSI. But what we're going to be doing is we're going to be looking at your high school transcript. There are certain things that you will have had to meet. You'll be able to talk to your counselor later about the very specific things. But understand it's it's not like a total, you don't just get to be in dual credit. You do have to meet some, some things. Certain, if you've taken advanced placement classes, that's going to help you. There are several different things that will be determined in there. Dual credit is hard. There's a lot of stuff you have to do. You must receive permission from your high school principal or counselor and parent or guardian to be able to take dual credit classes. You must be a high school student. Class load is determined by the ISD. You must apply via applytexas.org. Whenever you do that, please use your mailing address where it says address. If mail does not come to your house physically, if you have a post office box or something like that, please be sure to use your mailing address because you must submit completed paperwork an official transcript, which your counselor will supply, and tuition payment as required. Admission and registration is coordinated through the high school counselor's office. Everything that you take does have to go through your counselor. Eventually, you will have a Howard College counselor assigned to you, like we talked about earlier, and anything outside of the classes that are specific for Forsan will go through that college counselor. You're going to need to contact your high school counselor for rules and eligibility regarding taking dual credit classes. Howard College classes for dual credit students are greatly reduced. One class for most people is three hours. You can tell how many college hours a class is by the number. Say, for instance, you're taking History 1301. If you look at that number, the first number, a one, signifies that that class is a freshman level college class. If it was 2302, that first number, a two, would signify that is a sophomore level class. The second number, in 1301 tells you how many college hours that class is. Say you're taking history 1301 and English uh, 1301. That is three plus three, six hours total. And if you look at this chart that's up here, that would be $460. A student coming to Howard College for the first time, oh, you know what, these, these prices aren't right for y'all. Y'all are in district, y'all is cheaper than that. This is out of district prices, but we can use these as to start with anyway. Now, y'all are kind of lucky because Forsan pays for your books for the classes that they approve, and that's a big savings. You'll talk to your counselor about that. Tips for success in college classes, do not miss a class. You might wonder if it's an online class, how can I miss it? Well, that brings us into number two, print, read, and study the syllabus for each class. Parents, if I were you, I would have my student print all of the syllabuses for each class and give me a copy of them because that tells you pretty much everything you need to know about the class. It'll tell you their grading score, how they keep grade. It'll say their attendance policy. Let's say, for instance, an online class says, for this class, in order to be counted present, you must sign in three times a week and be signed in, logged in for a minimum of 30 minutes each time. All, every time you log into Blackboard, it is tracked. It tells how long you were in, you need to know that that is all tracked. It may say you have to communicate through the chat function inside there. You may have to put a post and then you may have to reply to three posts for your attendance to show active participation. Uh, number three on here, be knowledgeable of each instructor's grading policies, attendance policies, and participation rules. Every instructor has different rules. Several English teachers have a policy, no late work accepted. Do not wait too long before getting help if help is needed. Start by talking to your instructor. There are office hours on their syllabus. You can call them during those office hours or you can email them. 
most email with back to you within one or two business days. Don't expect to get an automatic reply whenever you send an instructor. They have several students and it does take them a while. And like other people, they do take a day off every now and then. But if you haven't heard to them in a couple business days, there may be a problem. If you think you're going to have problems, start early in the week so you can communicate. If you need help with something, like I say, start with your instructor. You can also do tutoring if you choose to. There's free tutoring through Blackboard, the online system. Also keep your high school counselor or your facilitator for your dual credit classes informed of any issues. There are deadlines for dropping a course. An F will not disappear from your college transcript. Do not assume if you just stop going to a class, if you just stop signing in, don't assume you're going to get dropped. You are not. You have to sign a paper to drop out of a class. If you're going to get an F, you need to drop it. This can cause problems, especially for seniors, uh, because if you're taking an English class that you need for your graduation and you're going to fail it, this could affect your graduation. You need to check with your counselor to see if there's time for credit recovery, if that's allowed. This affects a very small number of students, but I want you to understand those Fs will stay there forever and it can mess up your GPA. In dual credit, if you're not going to pass, we do need to do a drop because a W withdraw is much better than the F. You can withdraw from a class all the way up until about two weeks before the last day of class. You'd have to check the Coward College calendar each semester to find out the last day you can drop a class. Remember, you are taking a college course that may have different vacation days from the high school. Calendars may not always align. I showed you that slide at the beginning with all those different schools to let you know kind of how many different schools that we deal with. Almost every one of them is different. They have different teacher work days, basketball tournaments, different everything. Be sure you understand you may still have stuff that's due on a day that you don't have school because this is college. It's not high school. Again, yes, you are getting high school credit for the class. You fall under the college rules for that. Down at the bottom, it says communicate with college instructors and do not assume that you are excused from a college course for high school function. If you have a trip that you're going on that is excused by the school, it is your responsibility as a college student to communicate that with the instructor. Your instructors don't have a clue what your high school schedule is. It's not your instructor, um, your facilitator's job. It's not the school's job. It's not the counselor's job. It is you as the uh, college student. It's your responsibility to communicate with the instructors if you're going to need to miss a class. You usually know quite a ways out when you're going to be gone for a basketball game or something like that. If you have a paper due, you're going to be gone for three days to a tournament. You're not real sure that if you're going to have internet. You need to communicate before you leave with your instructor and see what they want you to do. Now, they may want you to turn it in early or they may say, ah, just turn it in when you get back. That's cool. Every instructor is different. You need to communicate with them. Don't assume if you just skip and say, oh, we had this and come back, they'll take it because they may not. Some will. A lot will not because you'll see in their syllabus it specifically says they won't. So be sure you read that. Communication is key. You need to communicate with your instructor. This next one is kind of a touchy thing. It's on plagiarism. Well, some people wait till the last minute to do their papers and stuff and say, hey, I can just go online and search and copy and paste. Do not do this. Most papers at Howard College are turned in through a plagiarism checker called Turnitin. This compares your paper to your classmates' papers, to papers that were turned in previous semester in your history class or your English class, to papers at Big Spring High School, papers from Junction, papers from high schools in Michigan, papers from students in other countries, even has a database of papers from websites like guaranteedoriginalpapers.com, which they are not guaranteed original, just so you know. Whenever these papers come back to the instructor, they're highlighted in all sorts of different colors. And it may say, it may be highlighted, and then the little number to the side would say, this paper is from Forsan Independent School District student from May of 2019. Please, please, please do not copy, do not plagiarize. Yes, you can cite some things in papers, but there's a limited amount you can do. You learn in English 1301 and 1302 how to credit your sources, and you can use limited credited sources. Most of the paper needs to be your own. Do not do this. Here's some miscellaneous information that is specific to Forsan. Classes at Forsan, students pay for the classes. Books are paid for by the ISD for approved classes. Tenth graders can take learning frameworks and speech. 
11th graders take history, seniors take English, psychology, government, math, and anything previously if they haven't. If a course is dropped or failed, students may no longer receive the dual scholarship. What this means is for the technical uh, classes at Howard College, we offer a scholarship that pays the tuition on those. You do not pay it. Like if you take one of the computer classes or the nurse, the CNA class or things like that, Howard College does issue a scholarship to you the first time you take it. As long as you do not drop the class and you pass it, you're eligible for that scholarship in next semesters. But say, for instance, you don't make the, the grade you need, you, you would have to pay regular dual credit rates. Be sure you understand that. If you take one, get one of the CTE classes with no tuition, they're great because you save big money, but if you don't pass, you may have to pay in the future. ADA does not carry over to college. If you have special accommodations that you receive at the high school, dyslexia, et cetera, you do have to contact the Howard College ADA coordinator at the beginning of each semester to see what special accommodations may be met for college purposes. Again, they do not carry over you have to do it every single semester. It's important for you to do it prior to the start of the semester because if you wait till halfway through, the whatever accommodations you get do not go back to help fix whatever you missed. It's just from that point that they were granted going forward for the rest of that semester. This is how it will be at every college you go to from now on. Every semester before, the class, before classes start, you need to talk to that ADA accommodation, uh, coordinator and then they will find out what accommodations you need. You may have to send them some documentation and then they will tell you what you can get on the college side and they will contact your instructors. At the end of this semester, which ends in December, the August through December semester, you would need to contact them again in early January so they can carry your you probably wouldn't have to send all the paperwork in again, but you do have to contact them. And then they would contact your new instructors because you have new instructors at that time and see what needs to be done. So that's very important. Be sure you do that. If you have questions or anything, you can contact me at dsparks at howardcollege.edu. My phone number is up there, but I am almost never there. So really the best way to get me is by that email address. Look over here in chat to see if I've missed anything here. One of the questions says, do you have a date for TSI testing? We will be open for TSI testing during the summer if you choose to do it. For math classes, I really, if you have any way to take the math TSI, I highly recommend you do that because if you can't pass that math TSI, you're probably not going to pass the math class. So there are some ways for this year only that we might can use other things for that, but I want to warn you that is a hard class. Um, if you do get into dual credit with that option three, not taking a TSI, you will right now probably have to take a TSI during the fall semester at some time. That Don't think that you're getting out of it and it doesn't carry over. So, I mean, if you don't pass it, I'm not sure what happens for the spring, but right now that's still all developing. But right now, Howard College's classes are tentatively scheduled to start on Monday, August 24th. The main Howard College webpage first and some things that you need to know. There's a lot of things you can find on this webpage. If you look here below the red banner thing there, there's uh, some drop down menus here. This one says students. If you pop that open and go down to class schedule and click that, this is where you can see what classes are offered at Howard College. Some of you may want to take some classes in the summer or during May Mini or things like that that you wouldn't get high school credit for, but you get the dual credit rate where you can cut some money on that. You can look at this schedule to see what's offered. Now, I do need to tell you, for me to get these classes, I have to ask permission, I have to build them. You cannot wait until the week before classes start to get a class. You need to be working on it before that because there's a lot that has to be done in order for me to get you that dual credit rate. I have to get approval from the dean. I have to get approval from the teacher. I have to build the class. I have to set it up in the billing system a certain way, or else you get charged the regular rate that everybody else does, and that's not what we want. You need to do this early. We're going to right now, if you look in this first column, you'll see it has all the different semesters. I'm gonna look at summer one, and I'm gonna look at online classes, and to make it faster, I'm just going to choose art classes. You can do all departments and all, but it takes a lot longer for the list to pull up. So I'm just doing this one. Let's say, for instance, in at the last 
month we were wanting to take an art appreciation class. Here you can see that there are three classes that were offered in summer one. You see here the date that it starts, 6-1 and ends at 6-30. I will tell you most college classes are 16 weeks long. In the summer when you take a college class, you get those 16 weeks squeezed into one month. It still has 16 weeks worth of stuff, but it's all in one month. So you really need to be sure you're ready to go in the summer. You cannot go on vacation and miss time in a summer class. It's impossible for you to pass if you do. Let's say you want to take Arts 1301. I mentioned the syllabus. I click this little hyperlink right over here. Syllabus for the class appears. This tells you about the class. This is an instructor who is an adjunct instructor. He doesn't actually work on the, the campus. There's only two or three that are that way. But most of the times it would say under office hours, there would be an office phone number and you would call him, but he is an exception to that because he's elsewhere. But you can see when he regularly logs in and does things. You go down here and you see your required textbook. If this wasn't a class that Force and ISD pays for, you would copy that ISBN and paste it into Amazon or somewhere and look and see that that book costs about 200 bucks. So you would go, oh my goodness. So be sure you check that. You do need to have those specific books. How, most Howard College classes do require books. They're not optional. It says that you need Microsoft Word 2003 or above. I will tell you that Howard College offers uh, the Microsoft Office suite free of charge to all Howard College students while you're there. You can put the Office suite, PowerPoint, uh, Word, everything on, I believe, two computers. You get that through your email, which we'll talk about in a minute. But it's free, so be sure you take advantage of that. He tells you how to log in, tells you course requirements, program outcomes, what are you going to learn, student learning outcomes, attendance policy. He tells you right there, I do not accept makeup work. Down here under grade percentages, I mentioned you need to be sure and look at that. If you'll look there, it says discussion, quant quality, quantity, and participation is 30%. I didn't read up there what he said you had to do for that, but what, what does that tell you? Even with my simple math, I see that if it's 30% of the final grade, the highest grade I can possibly make in his class if I don't participate and do what he needs is a 70 and that's if I make 100 on every single thing. So it's very important for you to look at that and make sure you do that. If you don't do that written essay that's 20%, the highest you can make in the class is a B if you made 100 on every single thing. College grades are different than high school grades down once you get past a C. You'll notice on a D in college is 60 to 69, and that's not the case in high school. So you need to be sure you know what that is. I'm sure most of you will be making above 70, so, so that won't be a problem. You'll see the ADA statement where he tells you you need to contact them, how to contact, Blackboard help, etc. But be sure you look at this whenever you're getting ready to take classes. Now these are not necessarily posted until after the class starts, but they are inside your Blackboard. Over here, if you click that, it tells you about the instructor, his teacher credentials, and things like that. You can also look at fall 2020, and then you can go down to Forsan, and you can click whatever classes you want. If you did all, it'll list all of the classes currently offered for Forsan. I'm not going to do that now because, like I say, it takes too long for it to populate. The next thing I want to show you is underneath this big box here, this little gray bar has a lot of things you need to know. First is MyHC, which we'll look at in depth. Next is Blackboard, email. These other ones have some information for you, catalog, library. Tutoring, if you need tutoring, clubs. And then there's the student handbook. If you click that, that's where you can read that. But we're going to go to MyHC first. This is your personal portal to Howard College. It's an interactive inter information system for currently enrolled students to access online resources and information. It says down there under what is my HC, it says that you can add and drop classes. You cannot do that because you're dual credit students. You have to go through your counselor. Also, whenever you get into my HC, you're going to see, most of you will see a bacterial meningitis hold. That is required by law. We have to put that on there unless you give us the exception or a bacterial meningitis shot record. But what you need to know about that is, is the only thing that that hold stops 
is you registering online, which you can't do anyway because another hold stops it. So if you see that hold, all you have to do is click the thing that says, yes, I know I have it. And then you can go on and do everything inside of Campus Connect, my C like you regularly could, which you can pay your bill, you can print unofficial transcripts, you can do some degree shopping. To get into that, up here at the top, you'll see username and password. This is the same username and password you use for Blackboard. MyHC has a lot of good stuff inside of it. You'll also notice some quick links here, back to the website. HC email, be sure you go in there, activate that. If you're not going to be checking it, there's a way you can forward it to an email that you are checking. They do surveys and stuff in there and different things get emailed to you that's important, like you're missing something, they may email you there, and if you don't answer it, it doesn't ever get fixed until you go try to get your transcript sent, and you can't because you have a hold, but they sent you an email three times, you just didn't respond because you weren't checking your Howard College email. Get inside there. If you're not gonna check it often, like I say, forward it to another email account. Also, once you get in there is where you can download Office 365 for nothing, and I think it's two computers you can put it on. It's that's where that is. Next is Blackboard, which we'll look at in a minute. HC Alert, you need to do that if you're taking any classes at the college, otherwise probably not. Here's where you reset your password, the catalog, and the handbook. There's also information over here on how to log in and everything, but you can't do that till you get your Howard College ID and everything. So that is the main Howard College webpage. There's a whole lot more you can do. If you go to the catalog, you can look at degrees, programs of study. If you want to be a nurse or whatever, you can look there and see what all you'd have to do. The next page I'm going to show you is a temporary page. This is hcbigspring.com. This page is really just kind of to get us through COVID. This will be integrated into the regular Howard College webpage next year. But there are some things on here you can look at. Just remember hcbigspring.com. Right here, this says dual credit. If you click here on this first one where it says dual credit application information, this tells you everything you need to know for filling out a dual credit application. So step one, go to Apply Texas. You click that, it takes you to Apply Texas. This is Apply Texas. The first time you go, you will create your account now and you will fill out this page. Whenever you're doing first and last name, use your legal first and last name. Do not use nicknames, do not use other things. Use what's on your legal paperwork. Also, there's a place, I think on the second page, where you will put uh, a social security number, but for some reason, it won't have a red asterisk next to it. Understand it is required. You have to put your social security number that's required by the government for college. Go down here on email address. If you have a Google or Gmail or something, Use that, don't use your high school email because your high school email will go, may go away whenever you graduate. You really need to have a personal email address that you check. The good thing about Apply Texas is all this information, once you put it in, it's saved. Put down your, save your password in your phone or whatever app you use for keeping passwords. And whenever you get ready to go to Tech or ASU or UT or wherever you wanna go, you can copy all the information straight over into there. You don't have to retype it, it's already there. So that goes into those applications for those universities. I will tell you Howard College does not charge for an application and universities do, but you won't have to type it all in. It tells you you need the dual credit packet. If you're doing coming to Howard College, you have to have a bacterial meningitis shot record. Uh, there's a video here. If you click that, it shows you step by step what to do on Apply Texas. This is about a year old, so a few things have changed in the interface. So there's gonna be some slightly different things, but not a lot. So you may have to adjust. It doesn't have any words in it, it's all written in. You can also look at screenshots down here if you wanna do that. The next thing I wanna show you is here under TSI, Enrollment and Requirements, TSI Testing. If you go there, if you're going to be taking the TSI, I highly recommend you go to this page and read these things. There is a study app right here where it says T TSI web-based free study app. This is put out by the people who give the TSI. This is the one you want to do. It looks like this. Don't search online for the apps. If you do, you're gonna get the ones that charge you. This one is free, put out by like I say, the people that give the test. Go in here and do this. You can take the test all the way through and then it'll tell you what you missed or you can do it one at a time and they'll say, no, no, that's not right because you need to do this. At the end of taking the test, it will tell you, you need to study this, 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 and this to improve these skills. I recommend you continue to take this until you make a passing score on it before you TSI test. 
That way you're not wasting your money when you're taking the test. Here's a bunch of forms. This one form I'm fixing to load up is a little confusing, but that's okay. It'll tell us the price that we need. There are three different kinds of students. For in-district students, if you live in Howard County, for one three-hour class, it's $194. If you go over here, you'll see for the out-of-district, it's $280. For two three-hour classes, it's $338. For three three-hour classes, it's $482. Basically, it's $50 to start and then $48 for each of different hours. So you see the first hour is $98, and then you add 48 for each hour. So there's a chart that shows that. So one three-hour class, 194, two, 338, three, 482. Now what we're going to do is we're going to look at a page I made for Forsan ISD. This page is a page that we've made specifically for you. If you go down here, you see here are the classes listed that you might be able to take. You do need to check with your counselor. If you type this FOISD link right there, that takes you to your counselor's webpage about all of the different things for Forsan specific dual credit tells you the different classes that you can generally take, some different notes. There's your counselor's email. It tells you what you need to do. It reminds you that accommodations do not automatically carry over. There is this presentation that we watched earlier. Some browsers, this doesn't work. It's just blank or something. If it works, you can click through it that way. If it doesn't work, you can go right here and you can download it. Whenever you go down here, if you are a first time dual credit student, this is the form I need. You'll click this right here and you'll get to this form. The first page is for you only. You don't return that. It tells you what all you need to do. Visit with your high school counselor, determine what you're eligible. Next, go to Apply Texas, fill that out. If you're taking classes at Howard College, we need an immunization record. And then if you have one of these, if you're a new student, please use them. Don't use that option three where you have to take the test and everything later and the, the transcript is evaluated. Use one of these instead if you've got it so you don't have to worry about that. If you don't, we'll use the other way. The high school transcript will be sent from your school. This page right here, please, please print very neatly when you fill it out. Make sure it's readable. Fill out the top. Fill out your parent information here. Read these things right here. I am going to highlight a couple of things on here. Number nine is the first thing. Dual credit early admission courses are college level. College level courses may include controversial, sensitive, and or adult material. Students are expected to have readiness for college level rigor and content. So be sure you understand that. Now number 10 we talked about. A student must notify Howard College by completing the withdrawal process by the last date to withdraw if you decide to drop or withdraw. Look at all of that. Right here where it says all college records, we really can't talk to anybody but the student. Parents don't like hearing this. Sorry, parents. But if you if your student has an issue, the student is the one who has to talk to the instructor. If there's an issue, you can talk to the counselor. The counselor can talk to me, and we can research it and get back to it that way. But the student needs to be the one that talks to the instructor. This number 16, if you check all college records and check that thing where it says parents, legal guardians listed on this form, what that can do is make it easier whenever your student is getting ready to go to college, make it easier for you to help them get their records sent to college colleges. There's a place for the student to sign it and a place for the parent to sign. Now, if you were in dual credit last year, you do not need to do this form again, you do not need to do Apply Texas. If you're a current dual credit student, all you need to do is this last page. New students to Apply Texas, those two pages, and this page. Right now, we made it to where this form up here lasts for the entire time, unless something changes, that your student is in dual credit. And Apply Texas stays on there too. So this last page is where you put your information. This one you can actually fill out online. You can just type in the things and print it. But you don't fill out this middle box. We'll do that. You put in the course that you want to take and really you don't have to do this other stuff here. We'll do that as well. There's a place for the student to sign and the parent to sign. Now your counselor is wanting these back, I believe, by June 18th. Danny, that's correct. June 18th. So fill that out and get that back to her and there may be a thing that she needs filled out for the high school as well. Check her webpage for that. And I have it here. If you're a current dual credit student, I've made it pretty easy. You click that and that one form is the only thing that appears. So I've made it pretty easy for you on that webpage. Are there any other questions? Let me see if there's anything here in chat. Um, Ms. Mim said, if you fail or withdraw from a dual credit class, you will no longer be able to take a dual credit class while in high school. Force and policy, not Howard College. So be sure that 
you need to take these classes very seriously. These are college classes. It's not something that you just take to get out of other classes. There are college classes with college rigor. Many sessions available for incoming juniors. There is a summer two session coming up that starts the first, like, like the first week of July, I believe. If you're interested in that, you need to email me pretty soon. Uh, you will have had to have met TSI requirements, but if you're a junior, you, pro or you probably already did. But like Ms. Mim said, uh, they won't count for dual credit, which means you'll get college credit, not high school credit. They don't count on your high school GPA. You can save some money and get some stuff out, out of the way, but they are allowed to take those whenever they want. How many college credits are allowed in high school? It depends. Um, you'll need to talk to your counselor about that. You can potentially get six total credits in 10th grade. That's uh, one class each semester, six and 11th, one class each semester, and 15, that's three in the, the senior year. Um, you can take, like we said, you can take other classes. They just would not count for high school credit. It would be college classes only. Also, you wouldn't want to take any of the classes that you can get dual credit for in a time outside of the time that the high school offers them because really it's better for deal for you to take those. Uh, be sure you remember hcbigspring.com backslash foisd.html. And somebody's asking what are the learning frameworks? Are they specific classes or a general category? The learning frameworks class is a class that you take to learn how to do college basically. It gives you some study ideas, um, how to use Blackboard and things like that. It's not different frameworks, I guess. It's one class that teaches you how to do a lot of things in college, gives you better study skills, makes you be more successful. It's a very good class to take for the first time. It's going to help you with all of your classes. And Forsan does require the learning frameworks in the 10th grade before you take other classes. Several schools do because it's a good thing to start. Um, I'm not seeing anything else. Thank you for coming. Like I say, if there's any other questions, you can also email me at dsparks at howardcollege.edu.